What's up, people? It's Ornlu featuring Heater. Also known as Heater featuring Ornlu. But we are on our penultimate campaign, guys. Montezuma. Our Aztec campaign. Our last of the OG campaigns. From AOC. I'm like three and a half weeks ahead at this point of like uh, when the videos are live, but I just kind of wanted to like finish this off so I can be done with it. Also, I'm the kind of guy that like when I get into something, I really want to focus on it and finish it and then like go on to the next thing and then focus on that. But without further, you know, that fancy word for waiting, adieu! Start with the demo scenario, Reign of Blood. Passed down to you by Cuauhtémoc, eagle warrior of Tenochtitlan. An omen appeared above the forest, the shape of an ear of corn, but blazing like daybreak. It seemed to bleed fire, drop by drop, like a wound in the sky. I am a warrior, not a priest, and knew not what to make of such a sign. I consulted with the seers and magicians to see if another great war was coming. But they answered only in riddles. The gods want more sacrifice was their answer. That was always their answer. Much of our empire of rainforest and volcanoes has been conquered in the name of That dude of went full Boromir. The magicians tell us that we must make a sacrifice every single day for the sun to continue to rise. It took the relay teams two full days to carry my message the 200 miles to our city of Tenochtitlan. After two more days, my uncle, Montezuma, emperor of the Aztecs, sent his reply. Montezuma's priest foretold that the god Quetzalcoatl might soon return from his long exile. How else to explain the omen? Montezuma ordered my warriors to increase their efforts to consolidate the rainforest between our land and those of our enemies. We must establish control over four shrines that are sacred to Quetzalcoatl. The Feathered Serpent. Because the Aztec Empire is mighty and constantly expands, we have made many enemies. We must defend these shrines from our enemies in order to prepare for Quetzalcoatl's eventual return. Aztec time, boys. Capture the four shrines, monasteries, sacred to Quetzalcoatl, and then place a relic in the said shrines. Also, you can't let the shrines uh, die, be destroyed. Pop limit of 75, just like in AOC. Yeah, can't uh, make more monasteries. Uh, don't, don't claim the shrines until you're ready to defend them. Aztecs have good monks, who would have thunk? Uh, we begin in the feudal age with only a few soldiers. These must defend the Aztec town from enemy attacks. Your enemies are three. The Tlatiluco are located to the west. Their army of swordsmen and eagle warriors can be dealt with relatively early. They are the weakest enemy. The Tepanaka dwell to the north of your town. Their walls may keep you out of their town until you have siege weapons. They train archers and eagle warriors. They are Mayans. The Huchimilco. Huchimilco. No, it's just Huchimilco. Are your most dangerous enemy. They live to the far north, actually they, go, they live to the west, and train archers and scorpions. Do not engage them until you have many eagle warriors or jaguar warriors at your command. Alright. So after playing a lot of... Harder. We've played like a lot of forgotten campaigns recently that are harder, so theoretically this should be on the easier side of things. I hear the growl of the jaguar. Is this a bad omen? But you can tell that this scenario was in some ways designed to be the demo scenario for this game. In case you, d you don't know what I'm talking about, which is actually fairly likely, um... For Age of Conquerors, the demo version of the game, back when, you know, games had demos, or like demo versions, not <laughs> open access betas, or whatever, um, this was the one scenario you could play. 
you start in the feudal age with a normal town and you have to go defeat your enemies. It featured, you know, the, the new civs. Well, more than just the new civs, it featured, you know, the, the meso civs. Whoops, that was kind of a fail. Anyway, we are going to be walling super fast because otherwise we get attacked. I mean, we get we, we we always get attacked no matter what. But this way, we are at least uh, well prepared. So yeah, you even start with, uh, you know, eight sheep and two boars, or turkeys, and then javelinas, but you guys get the idea. Let's just be uber safe, because uh, Tepanaka sends, like, eight archers or something at you. Like, pretty damn fast. You even have a forage bush, like, it, it all feels very random mappy. That's an adjective now. Told ya, it is only five archers, but they have fletching. Let's just go get that four. We're going to play this somewhat similar to uh, a normal game. I guess since the starting food and villager count is the same. At least I think it is. Well, no, we start with extra 100 gold, come to think of it. But yeah, the <clears throat> excuse me, the jungle is thick. So this map kind of plays like BF. So that's why we just walled quickly and we'll be totally safe. I think you used to have two shorefish here. Just saying. Getting gypped. W boar. Boar tried to screw me. So yeah, we're not going to bother getting the relics until we can defend them. I.e. Castle Age. Otherwise, they're just going to attack you and you're going to not be loving life. You going to attack us? Yep. Making Going to be making lots of eagle warriors. I am also, however, going to need a blacksmith. I do like Aztecs. I still think they are the best sieve for Arabia. Like, personally, I like Mayans a bit more, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy Aztecs. Okay. 
Let's get our wood income a going. Yeah, this is probably enough. So long as DE pathing doesn't betray us, but it doesn't do that ever, so we should be fine. Aztecs are like the only Civ that can make Feudal Age Eagle Warriors work because they train faster. Because Aztecs have the faster training military units in general. But like, because Eagle Warriors take 60 seconds to train in Feudal Age, it's a very big deal. Like, just in terms of the sheer amount of time you save is massive. Actually, let's gather a bit of stone. We're not too far off from Castle Age, though. Aztec farmers are super good. In case you don't know why, um, the Aztec extra carry capacity helps you a little bit in all your resource gathering, but with miners and lumberjacks, you're usually very, very close to your lumber camp or mining camp. Um, whereas with farmers, you tend to be a bit further away. And because farmers do so much walking back and forth, uh, it ends up with Aztec farmers being among the fastest in the game. I'm not sure how it exactly works out between Aztecs and Khmer right now, but both are pretty good and just a little bit behind Slavs. And then Vikings, of course, have the free wheelbarrow uh, and handcart, so you get an advantage in that respect as well. Yeah, let's get town watch, why not? Forty-four is the number I of villagers I, I used to use during the old AOC campaigns when you only had seventy-five pop limit. So for old time's sake, and because I think it's probably not even a bad idea, forty-four villas is what we're gonna make. I don't know how I originally came to that number, but it but it but it's what I did. I'm sticking to it, goddammit. Anyway, as soon as we hit Castle Age and can make some monks, we're gonna go ahead and grab these two shrines, Aztecs. Uh, it's nice in this scenario that they. You know, you, the mission is literally to gather all the relics. And it gets you to use the Aztec uh, relic bonus, which is very strong. How was I doing? Oh, yeah. You don't technically need to defeat any of your enemies, but that's, we're just going to kind of incidentally do that. You know, it's not our, our main focus, but we're just kind of going to get there anyway. You don't actually need to defeat Tlatiluco at all, because there aren't any shrines like near them, because they're right here. But you kind of need to defeat Tepanaka and Huchimilco. Huchimilco. But since we are restricted to Castle Age in such a low pop, we're gonna go good old forward Swork Shop. Number one. Number two. 
Also, once I finish this siege workshop, we're going to go ahead, well, one, and start making some rams, and two, uh, wall in these monasteries so they don't get sniped. Because it's not like they have extra HP or anything, they're just normal 21 HP mon 2100 HP monasteries. Oops. But no. Trying to get the high ground fight, goddammit. Come on! Anyway, uh, Flati Luko is definitely kind of a pushover. Shouldn't have any problems with them. They just have a TC right here and a few military buildings down here. Nothing we can't handle. Go for it, boys! Let's wall in this ca castle? Monastery? You know, same thing. That is the sound of me being attacked. Oh yeah, I still only have one barracks. I should probably get another one. Maybe even two more. Go crazy. Well, rip these guys. They didn't even have, like, any army. I remember them at least having some archers and infantry. Oh, they do! Well, why the hell weren't you guys sending these out sooner? Also, why are they still militia? <laughs> what? <sighs> One day we won't be housed. But it is not this day. Yeah, they have decent upgrades. Okay, should be fine. Let's drop the castle. Yeah, these guys are dead enough. Oh. 
Uh, these guys do have a castle. So you gotta be careful for that, but Huchi, Huchi Milko are still in feudal age. I definitely think Tepanaka is the best strongest enemy. I don't think it's actually Huchi Milko. Didn't I order those rams to join the party? Yes, I did. Okay, well, now they hit castle age. Should have some more coming, right? Yeah. And I think these guys also train some swordsmen, if I recall correctly. So you can't just go in with a bunch of rams and not expect them to all die. Probably get some forward barracks. Hey. Oh, what the hell am I doing? Go back to killing that. Gotta love the Jaguar Warriors. One of my dad's favorite units from back in the day. And they are pretty awesome, if not situational. Some people would say that they're terrible. That's definitely not true. Jaguar warriors are not terrible. They're just situational. You just don't run into a lot of infantry um, as Aztecs. You know, because your own infantry is so good. Also, uh, Tepanaka didn't used to be walled over here. Oh yeah, I guess I can provide whatever insight I can on these uh, old campaigns as I have played them a ton. Definitely don't need all these farmers. Didn't I send a villager over here? Yes, I did. Wait, you can't cross, can you? No, okay. So there's a little river here. You are going to need to dock it and transport over. Okay, now that those guys are out of the way, we can focus to, or put our focus on Tepanaka, and then be well on our way to winning. There are a ton of jaguars on the other side of the river, so just send a monk over, because uh, jaguars rec uh, recognize holy men, apparently. Oh, come on. In reality, it's because monks can't fight back against uh, jaguars or wolves or whatever. Wait, no, not over here. Go! Come on, I need that transport, man. Oh, 
All this, although, yeah, although this scenario is pretty straightforward, um, some of the later ones are actually a little bit on the tricky side as far as uh, Age of Conqueror scenarios go. Also, where is, where are these guys military? Also, these towers used to be completely islanded off, so you needed mangonels to take them down. Now you can reach them via shallows, so that's a nice little touch. Anyway, uh, once you reach this monastery, the Tapanaka are going to... Where the hell are these guys' army? These guys normally have a pretty decent-sized army. Okay, here they are. Well, I'll rip that monk. Yeah, so they spawned a bunch of eagle warriors. But we're just going to yank the relic. Just in time. Actually. Okay, these guys do have a huge army. They just weren't using it. Okay, we actually... I guess playing things a little close, because if we lost the temple, we, we would lose, but... As long as you're in time, we just win. So yeah, that was Montezuma 1. Not too crazy a scenario. Definitely your introductory campaign level whatever. Here's Tepanaka. They have a castle right here. They make plumed archers. Don't know why they didn't send the army at us sooner, but whatever. But yeah, these guys will take down your castle or your monastery if you're not careful. Volume. When my warriors had captured the shrines and defeated the Shoshimikan and Latiluko, we made the Shoshimikan. That is not land. how that looks. Laden with gifts for Emperor Montezuma, jade, feathers, and of course, prisoners. Take no prisoners, comrades. The city on the lake seems staggering after having been in the rainforest for so many days. Emperor Montezuma lives in the most sumptuous rooms of the palace with his wives and concubines. Tenochtitlan was one of the largest cities in the world at its peak. He frothing chocolate from a golden cup. Musicians played their drums and flutes. You know, masked women danced. How much? When my uncle Montezuma first ascended the great pyramid, the Aztecs and other Native American civilizations were able to accomplish without, you know, now, some draft animals of any kind. He sometimes makes decisions slowly, and rarely does he lead the warriors into combat. Montezuma's priest informed us that Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, would soon return to Tenochtitlan to reclaim his kingdom. Since I had helped prepare for his coming, I was given a new obsidian makana and promoted to the rank of jaguar warrior. There was more feasting and dancing that night. The air was heavy with perfume. However, I noticed as I walked down the steps of the Emperor's palace that the omen still hung heavily over the lake, spraying sparks over the midnight sky. So says Cuauhtémoc, jaguar warrior of Tenochtitlan. Alrighty, Katie's still broken. Nice little bit of relic gold. Anyway, that will be the Reign of Blood. Next up will be not the double, not the quadruple, the triple alliance. See you guys then.